Odds are you have a really awesome prom date this prom season, so let's make the best origami corsage for her. All right, so first things first, we're gonna need a list of supplies. Some of these supplies will include three pieces of regular red origami paper, one sheet of regular green paper, one piece of regular origami paper, one green wire stem, a roll of stretchy fabric lace, one roll of white slash transparent ribbon, a small hot glue gun, a larger hot glue gun, and a regular piece of white paper. Just as a review, here's a wrap up list of the things we need. Oh, and I forgot to mention scissors and a cutting board. Anyways, so let's get to it. So the first thing you're gonna need to make are three red origami roses. Now I teach how to make the origami roses in a previous video. As a matter of fact, it was one of the first videos I made, but you're gonna need to click on this video or if you're on a mobile device, make sure to click on the link below that will send you directly to it so you can learn how to make it. Make sure to reserve a little bit of extra time for this because it will take at least 20 minutes per flower, especially if you're just learning how to do it. Once you have those complete, that's when you're going to grab your regular green sheet of paper along with the pencil. You're going to use the pencil to draw three circles that are approximately the size of the base of your roses. This is important to make this as accurate as possible, but at the same time, don't be too picky because that's when things get a little messy. Now in this, you can't exactly see me drawing all that visibly, but notice that the three circles are in a triangle kind of shape. So it's important to keep it in that basis. Like so. You're now going to take your pair of scissors that I've sort of forgot to mention, and you're going to cut around the edges of this to cut out your three circles. Now, they're all going to be interconnected through one base, and this will be the base of your corsage. So make sure that you do it neatly, but again, don't be too picky about it. Also, don't worry about these circles being the exact same size. Just make sure that they're not bigger than the bases of the roses. If they're smaller, that's fine. This is when it'll be good to take your roses and for a comparison shot, place them on top. And yes, there is an oddball. I was out of the same colored paper, okay? So back to your base, you're now gonna use your hot glue gun to do pretty much the easiest part. You're going to simply take it, smear it across the uh, base really unneatly, as demonstrated. Take your rose and apply it. You wanna make sure that you're really firm, but not too firm as to cripple it. You're then going to apply this throughout the rest of the three roses. Make sure to hold for at least 20 seconds for each rose. The worst thing is to stop applying the rose when it hasn't dried yet. That can mess up everything. This will bring you to step four with the cutting board, or whatever this thing is called. You're gonna take your six by six piece of green paper, and now you're going to cut an even smaller piece of green paper out of this green paper. You're gonna take your pencil, and at this point I marked the inch and a half mark, but if I were you, I'd go a little bit bigger. What you're gonna do is you're gonna cut out three squares that are the same size, except that the third one will be about three tenths of an inch smaller. Or unless you can't get it like me and you're just gonna mess it up. It just, it, no, 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 little, no. Yeah, I, yeah, the mark's right there. There we go. So this is what we'll be using. But for demonstrational purposes, we'll be a little more realistic. And this is where we're gonna create the leaves. We're simply going to fold it in half diagonally. After doing so, we're going to unfold, fold one side indirectly, but as exactly as possible into the middle. You're then going to follow it with the next side. What you're now gonna do is very indirect, but is one of the most important parts of this leaf. You're simply gonna take it and fold these creases along the edges that I've shown. Now, this will not be going to any specific folding position in the model. However, it will create a really nice design that will give the leaf kind of this veinish look. And by that, I mean it'll give the leaf veins. 
You wanna be careful that these lines are level and steady, but don't be a fanatic about it. Keep in mind that this is gonna be really small, so if you're doing this along with me, you'll realize probably as much as I will that it's not gonna be all that noticeable. It'll simply give a really nice design to patternless paper if you don't feel like going there. You're now gonna take your flower and you're going to fold the corners that are left on the leaf. This will give it more of a round look that you're really gonna wanna be looking for. After doing this on all four edges, you're simply gonna grab the leaf, form it as so, and create what you'll call the stem. You have your leaf except a little bit cuter. Yay! With friends. You're now gonna take your original origami corsage basis, grab your hot glue, and glue right in between two of the origami roses. You're gonna take your leaf and you're essentially gonna squash the stem in between that. Be careful because this involves half the corsage and if you mess this up, you're gonna have stained glue for life. You're then gonna take the next corner and take your second leaf that is the same size as the first leaf and glue it in there. Now I was such a klutz that I messed up something while applying the third leaf so I kinda had to skip that. In which case, you're simply gonna take the smaller one and apply it over the second bigger one. Make sure it's glued firmly. You're now gonna take your green wire stem and you're gonna measure it up next to the base of the corsage. These will work as your baby's breath. You're going to size it and you're going to bend it over the approximated size that just so sticks over the corsage, just enough to look good. Now you can use your wire cutters, which I also forgot to mention, to cut it. You're now gonna make three of these. Now for this demonstration, I only use two of them, but that's just because I need it to be a little more simple. You can use your wire cutters or whatever else to squish the base as thin as possible, but essentially you're gonna glue in the middle so that you can apply the second one in between it. You're now gonna take your regular white sheet of paper and cut out a little tiny square that will end up being your baby's breath for your baby's breath stem, that sounds so weird. You're essentially gonna take it and you're going to wrap it around the tip of the stem. And this sounds like a really simple part, but honestly, I have the hardest time with this every time. So make sure to spend some time with it. This part could really impress or really flop the whole project. Like so. You're now gonna take the tip of the baby's breath that you just created, remove it, apply some glue, then reapply the baby's breath in the previous hole that you had. Then simply mold it on and make sure that there's no external glue. You're gonna do this again with the second one, and again, and again. Ta-da! You're now going to apply glue to the base of the middle of the corsage and as quickly as possible, take the baby's breath that you just created and apply it as firmly as possible. Hold it for about 20 seconds. You're now gonna use your white ribbon to do my personal least favorite part, and that is apply ribbon. And I honestly can't tell you what the measurement for this was, but it was honestly too big, so I'm just using this for demonstrational purposes. You're gonna take your ribbon and kind of accordion it up like this. And right off the bat, to all those ribbon people who actually do this out there, I'm so sorry, I'm probably insulting you so much. I grab it, I use the glue to simply glue right in between this kind of accordion thing I've made, and then I squish it together. And it kind of soaks into all the others and bleeds into that. Now you're gonna make two of these ribbons. Then you're going to reapply the same technique that you did with the leaves. And you're simply gonna glue in between the roses to place the ribbon there. And I suggest you curve it upwards a little bit cause the more the better. 
For the second ribbon, you're going to apply it in between the two roses that has the single leaf. This will give it a little bit of versatile variety, I guess, and will make it look balanced. Make sure that the base of the ribbon is not shown, because if so, that can really kill the vibe of the corsage. This brings us to our last step, which involves the elastic fabric ribbon stuff thingy. This is where I went to my sister for help. Hey, Cole, need your help. All right, get your wrist out. That's it, no? Tighter, less tight. I took her measurements and approximated it as my prom date. Now her measurements turned out to be about five inches long, though you're gonna have to estimate what your prom date's wrist will be. You're now gonna use the glue to apply it to one end of the ribbon. Then you're gonna take the other end and wrap it around and press it as firmly as possible. Because if this undoes itself, well, you'll be in trouble. Here lies the final step where we're gonna apply the ribbon to the corsage. And you're gonna wanna do this in a fashion where the two green leaves that are shown are faced away from your hand and the gap that has no leaf will be facing your hand. To your left, I see no signs. With it in position to do so, you're going to apply glue. And for the grand hallelujah, apply the ribbon. Make sure to press this for as long as possible. And if you're like me, you'll have to rotate it a little bit when you first apply it. And that is your complete corsage. Ta-da! Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to watch some of my other origami tutorials, click on the link on the screen or just click down below for the direct link. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And no, that is not my art. Because that would be weird.